Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct News. Sam I be the Angie. I'm working with the lights here with the uh, media speaks. We were working on it and we decided to go live. No sense in tripping right before Thanksgiving. I am going to go ahead and give everybody my um, official Thanksgiving commentary. Uh, HDF up there, uh, live stream down here. I'm going to do it after the show. Because if I do it now, a week from now, when Thanksgiving is over, nobody's going to listen to anything that I said. And that sucks, because a lot of this is going to be things that you're going to want to listen to probably for the next, I would say, coming weeks. Because there's been some big decisions today for those of you that follow the news. So I am very grateful for a number of things, and those things I will be getting to at the end of the show. Alright guys, uh, all of this is brought to you by uh, the day the lights went out. It's, uh, it's a really funny, funny book by D. Allen Ross, uh, show sponsor. Make sure you check that book out. That is really, really quite funny, friends. The day the lights went out. This is Donald Trump's education secretary, Betsy DeVoe. DeVos, DeVoe. It's a top Republican donor and an advocate for school choice. Now, see, that's the good news. It's brought to you here by Blasting News. That's the good news. The uh, bad news here is that she has been on the side of Common Core. Now, the argument that I believe is being given here, as I wear my uh, Thanksgiving Day hat, in case you're wondering, um, the problem with her is she supported it. She's going to say because it was better than the existing plan, but that she likes Trump's plan more. Well, if that's true, that's fine. But if it's spin, then it's a sign of capitulation from Donald Trump, because he said that he was going to eliminate Common Core. So we're going to go ahead here and hope very, very much that he is not turning out to be what so many people worried that he would be and that is uh, promising one thing and doing another. Um, the Hillary Clinton, though, he's not going to prosecute her bit. That's fine and good to get along with your enemies. That's, that's very important. That's very noble. But if this is a slippery slope towards getting all of our promises broke, then that's not good. The upside is that she's always been in favor of choice. And uh, what, what a lot of this is about, for those of you that don't know, it's about the right to send your kid to whatever school you wish to. Not based on where you live, but based on the school that gets the best results. And about homeschooling and charter schooling and leaving the choice of education up to the parent to work out as they see fit with their child, not the government intervening. So in that aspect, it's really, really promising. As President-elect Donald Trump continues to fill out his cabinet for the presidency, his latest appointment is for the position of Secretary of Education. Of course, Betsy DeVoe, the Michigan native, uh, will succeed John King in the position. Says getting to know her, DeVoe is a billionaire donor for the GOP and was offered and accepted the position of Secretary of Education. Now, did she get this because of the amount of money she gets? Or did she get this because Donald Trump believes that it's somebody that's going to be able to work on his team? Again, if, uh, to reiterate, if she was for Common Core for a number of reasons, but likes Donald Trump's idea better, then it looks like she could actually be a decent fit for this. And if not, then we could be looking at a really poor choice as a cabinet pick here. But again, we're going to give Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt. We're not going to crucify her before we've given her a chance, because that's what we're blaming the left for. We don't even give, they don't even give Donald Trump a chance before they trash him. So we're not going to do that to him. But we are going to mention here on the correct views, it's something we need to keep an eye out for. Uh, she's known to be a supporter of Common Core standards, but she did disavow this on Wednesday, thankfully. But Trump has vowed to eliminate such standards in the country. She is also the chairperson for the group that supports charter school education. Well, that's a good sign. That's promising. She was born on January 8, 1958, in Holland, Michigan. She eventually rose to the position of chairman of the Michigan Republican Party, which she served from 96 to 2000. She is a board member of the Foundation of Excellence in Education. 
and has countless endowments and scholarships in her family's name. She is also chairman of the Mincrest Group, which invests in manufacturing and technology. So, wh what, what are we to take away here? Is she going to be somebody that's going to be on the side of liberty, or is she going to be somebody who isn't? Is she going to be someone who is uh, going to help Donald Trump capitulate? Or is this Donald Trump making the other side capitulate? Because uh, you've got to remember, just because she may have supported Common Core and been wrong on one issue, when you look at her entire career, you would have to ask yourself, pretend you were her. Because you disagreed on one aspect of education, does that mean that all of the knowledge that you have acquired in education is therefore null and void? Or are you saying, all right, maybe I like this idea, maybe I still do, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to use my knowledge and bring that into this arena, and I'm going to make things better for the president and for the country in a way that the president wants. He wants my knowledge to make things happen. He doesn't necessarily want me to come up with ideas to happen. And if that's what he's doing, then you know what? That's fine. I don't have a problem with it. We're just going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to watch. Again, This we, we won the election, but that doesn't mean we don't hold his feet to the fire. Uh, here's five absurd ways the left has responded to the 2016 elect election. It's from Breitbart. Breitbart has been having a fit about not prosecuting Clinton, by the way. Uh, they've had cry-ins. <laughs> they really hold a cry-in at Cornell University. They got together and wept in the quad sobbing about the terif how terrifying Trump's victory was. Well, let me tell you what. I've heard, I wrote an article about this on Blasting News, you can find it, Sam DeGangie, Blasting News, uh, about the suicide hotlines that have uh, gone through the roof since uh, Donald Trump has won. Well, let me tell you what, I don't remember suicide hotlines coming into fashion when Ron Paul was cheated. I don't remember suicide lines happening uh, when that went down. I'm going to take this hat off because it looks ridiculous. Well, well, my hair looks even worse. But uh, it was fine. It was a funny Thanksgiving joke. I know, I know, if you don't have some humor, you don't have a show, but this hat looks ridiculous. Um, I will say this. Um, the main issue here is when, the, when it's cheating that's the left happening to the right, or when it's the right cheating itself, like we saw with Ron Paul, then that's absolutely fine, of course. But when the left legitimately loses an election and they have a fit. And they did legitimately use it. You can see this with the illegal vote that was what? Uh, three, three million people. There were five million dead people that voted. When you factor that out, Trump won by a landslide because by simple coincidence, most of those illegal votes went to Democrats. Imagine that. They had therapy dogs Pettable pooches were trotted on to school children in New York. As the New York Post reported, this is once again sending all the wrong signals about the nature of elections and responsible citizenship. So that dogs support dogs because Trump won. Aww. And safety pins. I used to be a big safety pin fan, big punk rock fan. I'll never do it again. They became the new badge of aggrieved loser status, accompanied by the kind of social media hashtag campaign that the Obama administration was occasionally substitute for foreign policy. Safety pins are supposed to identify the wearer as an island of safety and tolerance for women, LGBT people, immigrants, and people of color. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, Ron, uh, Donald Trump, the great hater of women here, has been nominating an awful lot of women to positions here. I'm just saying. We've got talks of Laura Ingram. Last time I checked, Laura Ingram was female. Um, we got Betsy that we just talked about. We were hearing talks about Amarosa uh, getting a post. I'm seeing a lot of women here. I'm just saying. Uh, open letters. The first wave of post-election open letters were appropriately addressed to children, but Hollywood's Jeffrey Katzenberg at least managed to write one without using grade school kids as props and it's still dripping with the sort of condensation that got the liberals creamed in 2016. <sighs> Throwing down the bat and leaving the park is not an option. And so th this is what they consider, this is, what they, this is how they handle uh, losses here, friends. Five, Clinton victory fantasies. It is fantasized that Clinton won in order to make themselves feel better. 
threatened victory fantasies, a few distraught lefties have floated outright assassination fantasies or implied threats of insurrection, but most of them are smart enough to stay away from rhetoric that could land them against the Secret Service. Now, if someone did that against Donald Trump, I mean against uh, oh, President Obama, excuse me, the, the great savior Obama, then everybody would immediately be talking about how unbelievably racist it is. It's not racist to rebel. It's not racist to protest. That's what they're doing. The trouble is they're protesting, and half of them that are arrested for protesting, they didn't vote. Did you know that? They didn't vote. The other problem here is you want to talk about heartbreak? Let's talk about heartbreak. Let's talk about driving from Canton to Bilderberg. It's a true story. Driving to Bilderberg. The passion and fire and drive that the people displayed at Bilderberg were absolutely astounding. And then we come home and Rand Paul has endorsed Mitt Romney. This is after it was publicly acknowledged that Ron Paul was cheated out of Iowa, largely by his own party. That completely derailed his run for the entire rest of the pre-election season and doomed his election. Why don't you get sad over that? Why don't you get sad over cheating? Okay, how about not a legitimate win? And friends, that brings us to the Dumdy of the Day! <laughs> That's right, the dumpty, 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 dumpty of the day. Give it all into the stupidest and the dumbest. You are an idiot. Who's winning it today? Uh, it's Jill Stein winning it. Uh, friends, Donald Trump has won this election by a landslide. Uh, people are saying he didn't win the popular vote. He certainly did when you factor out those that were illegal and those that were... Um, um, dead, from dead people. So, he did win popular vote. Uh, according to a feed that I got here, it was just tweeted before I went live by uh, Brylan Van Dyke, Trump wins Michigan by 10,704 votes. Now that's a pretty substantial win. 10,000 people. Most of you listening to me right now, probably live near a town that is smaller than 10,000 people. Um, that's a significant amount of people. But yet, for Jill Stein, it somehow isn't enough. <laughs> and that's why she's winning the dumpy of the day. Um, this is from The Hill. She's going to file for a recount in three states. Now, she's the one who said we had more to fear under Clinton than Trump. That was only rhetoric to try to get Trump voters. Well, yeah, I had a lot of respect for Jill Stein before this, and I've had a lot of good things to say about her as a person, though not a politician. That may be changing after this. Former Green Party presidential nominee Jill Stein, who wins the dumpty of the day, intends to file for a recount in three states. She plans to request a recount in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, her campaign said in a statement on Wednesday. After a diverse and painful presidential race reported hacks into voter and party databases and individual email accounts were causing many Americans to wonder if our election results are reliable, Stein said in the statement. These concerns need to be investigated before the 2016 presidential election is certified. 10,000 people. There is no way a hack happened that affected 10,000 thousand people, Jill Stein. Jill Stein, that is why you're winning the dumpty of the day, just to be painfully clear here. Stein's campaign claimed that some of the machines used in Wisconsin were banned in California due to the vulnerability of hacking. The only people hacking have been the people on the left, the people that you supposedly ran in the Green Party for so that you could be not affiliated or unaffiliated with these idiots on the left, that you could be a left party apart from them. Because we know how they cheated Bernie. We know how by their own memos they talked about cheating within their own party. And yet you're going to come out here and do this. Greens have long been at the forefront of campaigns for election integrity. Of course they have. She launched a fundraising page on her website to bankroll a recount on Wednesday after seeing compelling evidence of voting abnormalities, the Stein Baraka Green Party campaign is launching an effort to ensure the integrity of our elections. I'll tell you what. The integrity of our elections are only in jeopardy due to people like you, 
who are somehow too dull of wit to understand that you do not win by 10,000 votes due to a hack. That's like getting in a fight and the guy that hits you has a black eye and you have two black eyes, your jaw is broken, and you're in the intensive care unit. Okay, there is a difference. You did not mildly lose. You got trounced. Hillary got trounced. Johnson got trounced. And Trump is the president of the United States of America. And for that, I'm very thankful, friends. Now I'm going to get in. That's your show. I'm going to get into my Thanksgiving talk. And this is for people that follow the show and care about what I have to say. And, uh... This has been kind of a rocky year, I'll be dead honest. I lost a job that I had for 10 years in the 4th of July, and it paid very, very well. And I don't have it anymore. I've been a content writer. Uh, shout out to Steve. Very thankful to Steve. Uh, thankful to uh, my friend in Tennessee, Mr. Jonathan. Uh, the legend of Bear Creek places that I have worked since. I have been working largely for myself or in temp jobs ever since I quit, and I'm trying to make this show the main focus of my, my, my future here. I am in a band that is signed, and I want to do this show. Those are the two things I want to do. Writing is fine, but these are the two things I want to do. So I'm thankful for you guys that listen, and I'm thankful for you that donate at the correct views of Hotmail.com through PayPal. I appreciate that, because that's what keeps me going. Yeah, I'm very thankful for my wife, and I'm very thankful for the fact that I have a couple properties that looks like I may be able to rent them at some time soon. Um, above all else, thankful for my health, and uh, for you guys watching, for you guys to take the time to make sure that I have a show to begin with. It's been a good year for a number of things. We got press, uh, press credentials this year at the Trump rally. That's a, that's a big score. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting all of you engaged. You guys helped me to bring you a better show. And it's a better show that I'm going to bring all of you. You have my word on that. Um, you keep supporting me and I'll keep bringing you news, friends. Good night. God bless. And among all else, have a wonderful, happy, and safe Thanksgiving. If you're flying, make sure you don't go through the backscatter radiation machines. Just go through the pat-down. Those things can be toxic. If you don't believe me, look up backscatter radiation machine. Airports cancer. Don't do it before you eat. It's grizzly.